The second major theme coming out of Unit 2 is analyzing two quantitative variables measured from the same set of data. Again, this would be like taking a sample of frogs and looking at the lengths of the frogs, that's a quantitative variable, and the weights of the frogs, that's also a quantitative variable, again, values that are measurable and numerical based. Now, when you're analyzing the relationship between two quantitative variables, absolutely nothing beats a scatter plot. When you are trying to create a scatter plot, both variables must be quantitative. Trying to make a scatter plot with categorical variables would be like me trying to make a mall look good. When creating a scatter plot, the one thing that matters most is that both variables must be quantitative. You cannot make a scatter plot with one or two variables being categorical. The variable on the x axis is known as the explanatory variable, and the variable on the y axis is known as the response variable. The explanatory variable is the variable whose values try to predict or explain the corresponding values for the response variable. When you are given or when you create a scatter plot, you're oftentimes going to be asked to describe what you see. In that description, you want to make sure you mention four really important things the direction the form, the strength, and any unusual features that you may see in that scatter plot. I also like to add a fifth component to that description, and that is simply describing what you see in context to the problem, meaning using the variables and the units that are present in that specific problem. Let's dive into each of those four components in specifics. First, when we talk about direction, we talk about positive or negative. The explanatory variable on the x-axis is always increasing. If the response variable is also increasing, we say that that's a positive direction. If the response variable is decreasing as the explanatory variable increases, that is said to be a negative direction. Next up, we have the form. The form is basically what shape or what form you see those dots on the scatter plot creating. A very common form that we see is linear. We could also see a giant curve, whether it be logarithmic curve, an exponential curve. We could also see a parabolic curve, which you guys know what a parabolic curve looks like. It goes up and then back down. Now, you're never going to see a perfect relationship in the real world. So don't ever expect to see a perfect curve or a perfect straight line. There's always going to be a little bit of scatter to it, which brings in our third component of strength. The strength of the scatter plot is how closely the points create the form that you see. If they really clearly make a line, then you're going to say it's pretty strong or very strong. Same thing if it makes a very nice, perfect curve, you're going to say it's a pretty strong relationship. The last piece is unusual features. Here we're talking about maybe you see a big gap, maybe there's a bunch of uh, points at the bottom, a bunch of points at the top, and a big gap in between, or maybe half of it's linear and the other half is curved. You know, an unusual features is really something that doesn't always occur, and you don't always have to mention it, especially if there isn't anything unusual about it. But oftentimes, if you see anything unusual going on in your graph, like clusters here and clusters there, and maybe each cluster is doing something different in terms of what one cluster is being positive, another cluster is being negative, whatever, you want to make sure you mention it. But lastly, don't forget about that fifth component that I mentioned, simply talking about what you see in context. Oh, hey, I noticed that as the length of a frog goes up, there's a tendency for that frog to weigh more. Again, I'm basically saying that it's positive, but I'm using it in a way that is using the words of the problem, which is what we mean when we say in context.